Hello and welcome to the Bearded Math Man's YouTube channel. Hey, in this video, this lesson, what we're going to be talking about is the basically the three ways that you can find x-intercepts for a quadratic equation, right? And specifically, when and how you can use inverse operations, because it's by far the simplest one. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be learning how to find the x-intercepts using inverse operations. We're going to briefly talk about all three cases, though, right? There's three ways. You can use inverse operations, by far the easiest. You can find x-intercepts by, by factoring and then solving, or you can use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is the one that always works. You can't always factor. You can't always use inverse operations. So you might be wondering, hey, wait a minute. I know that if this always works, why don't I just always use it? And the reason why is, well, because it's tricky. It's the easiest one to mess up. These two are easier. This is the quadratic formula is by far the trickiest one. So let's talk about, in this video, let's talk about how we can use inverse operations to solve a quadratic equation to find its x-intercepts and when we can do it, right? So overall, if you have something like this, do you see, where we only have an x squared, we don't have an x squared and another x, you can use inverse operations. If you don't have x and only x squared, good to go. So inverse operations, of course, you know, sad map, right? PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That's our normal order of operations. That's, that's like the rules for math. Well, inverse operations is what we do in algebra when we're trying to undo operations. So our very first step in finding x-intercepts is we set it equal to zero, right? The reason we do that is because this is the same as y, and y is zero for all x-intercepts. Now we're going to use inverse operations, right? We're going to do subtraction and addition first, and then we're going to do multiplication and division after that, exponents after that, and the very last thing we'll take care of is anything that's in a group. That's inverse operations in a nutshell right there, right? So our goal, we want x by itself. So we have to get rid of this, it's a 2, it's a square, and there's 9, it's negative and it's subtracting, right? So we're going to do the subtraction first, we add 9 to both sides, this makes 0, and that's 9 equals x squared, right? Now the 2 is an exponent, the opposite of square is square root, so we take a square root of both sides. Now this right here, this is really asking, hey, what number times itself? What number squared is 9? There's two answers to that question. Now, a lot of the time, like in lower level math, and even in some of the stuff you do later on in math, you only need, or sometimes it's even only better to only have one of the answers to that question. But for quadratic equations, when you're finding the x-intercepts, you need both. There are two answers to the question, what squared is 9? 3 and negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. You need both answers. Super important, right? So this equation has two x-intercepts. The vertex is 0, negative 9. That's below the x-axis. And a is positive 1, so it's going up. So two x-intercepts. Now, let's see another one. This equation, it's a is negative, it's going down. But the reason we can use inverse operations is because we have an x squared, not an x. So let's go ahead and get to it, right? First thing you're going to do is you're going to set it equal to 0. Always and ever, forever, amen, right? Because... We're finding x-intercepts, right? For all x-intercepts, y, this is the same as y, y is 0. So let's go ahead and look at our steps right here. Very first step, subtract 16 from both sides. Then you divide by negative 9. Negative divided by a negative is positive, right? Now we got to get rid of the 2. we got to take the square root of both sides. When you take the square root of both sides, well, there's two answers, right? This is saying what times itself is 16 over 9. Well, there's two answers. And let me show you how I know what they are. Look, 4 times 4 is 16, and 3 times 3 is 9. So this, this is 4 thirds. It's also negative 4 thirds, because negative 4 over, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, 3 times 3 is 9. So we have two answers. We have negative 4 thirds and we have positive 4 thirds, right? So just using the inverse operations, good to go. Just be careful with this. It's not a huge deal. In this case, these were perfect squares so we can simplify them. If not, we just leave them as, you know, square root numbers like the square root of 8. Well, that could be simplified too, but it's not a perfect square. So you can't write it as an integer. No big deal. We'll get into that here in the, in the near future, okay? Let's see another example. This is vertex form. First step, as always, set it equal to zero, right? Now, 
order of operations. We've got a bunch of stuff going on here, but for vertex form, it's always the same exact order of steps. Always and always and always. It's super, super consistent, right? We have to get rid of subtraction and addition. Whatever that number is, we have to do the opposite of it first, you see? Then comes division. Whatever this is, we have to divide both sides by that because that's the opposite of multiplying. That's multiplying. Then exponents, which is a square root, and then anything in the parentheses. So this is going to go very, very last. We're going to do the opposite of this last because it's, you know, parentheses, anything in a group. So let's go ahead and do that. So we, we got to get rid of the negative six. We got to get rid of 16. So we're going to subtract 16 from both sides. Do you see? 16 minus 16 is 0. We're left with 16 plus 0, which is, sorry, negative 16 plus 0, which is negative 16, right? Now, that negative 9, we got to get rid of it. We're going to divide both sides by negative 9. And the reason you divide by negative 9, in case you're not sure, negative 9 divided by negative 9 is positive 1, and that's what we want. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 9. This reduces to positive 4 thirds, or sorry, 16 ninths. Next up, we're going to take the square root, right? We already messed with that 4 thirds once before. Negative 9 divided by negative 9 is 1. Good to go. Next thing we got to do, we got to get rid of that square. So we're going to take the square root. Square root of 16 over 9, as we just saw, is 4 thirds. But there are two answers. One's a plus and one's a minus. The square root of x minus 3 squared is just x minus 3, right? So the square root of something squared is just that radicand right there, x minus 3. So now, this is where we get in trouble. We got something weird going on here. You see that symbol plus minus? That means there is a plus, a positive part, and there's also a negative part. That's the answer to this question right here. So what we do, what you really have to be careful of on paper, and this is where people really mess up, they don't do both. Look, we have one answer that's positive. See, 4 thirds equals x minus 3. You have one answer that's that the square root of this is negative. Negative 4, three, four over third, 4 thirds equals x minus 3. You need both of them. You have to make sure you got both of them there, all right? So you do it on paper like this. You separate it. You use the space. You're going to be just fine. Now, the steps are the same, but the answers are going to be different because one's a positive number, one's a negative. So either way, though, you're going to add 3 to both sides. Do you see? Add 3 to both sides. Now, sometimes the fractions can be kind of confusing. So look, 4 thirds plus 3. That's what we have up here, right? Two ways you can handle this. You can make that 4 thirds into 1 and 1 third plus 3, which is 4 thirds. You could do that. Or you can make this 3 into a fraction. Multiply by 3 over 3, you get 9 over 3, and you get 13 thirds. Same exact number. See, 12 plus 1 is 13 over 3. 3 goes into 13 four times with a remainder of 1. They're exactly the same number. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. Now you have to do the same thing, though, for the negative. See, we have this negative part here. You could do, you could do it as making this an improper or a, a mixed number, right? 4 over 3. 3 goes into 4 one time with a remainder of 1. Or you could multiply this by 3 over 3 to get a common denominator with this. Either way, you get the same exact answer. You need to do it both of them. You need to do both of them, though, because here are our x-intercepts. We've got 4 and 1 third and 1 and 1 third, or 5 thirds, either way. So the answers could both end up positive. They could both end up negative. That doesn't really matter. What does matter, though, is when you take the square root of this, you end up with a positive and a negative number as the answer to that part right there. So got to be really careful with that. So to summarize, if you have something in vertex form or an equation, a quadratic equation, with only a single x squared, so like x squared and then a number, right? Plus or minus a number. In those cases, you can use inverse operations. It's the quickest and the easiest method out of all of them. So that's what you should try. You shouldn't use a quadratic formula. You shouldn't try factoring because it's already pretty much done. It's easy. Now, there are a couple of cases where the factoring is super, super simple, like x squared minus 9. But right now we're working on using inverse operations like this. So Here's some practice problems right here. I will put a link in the description where you can find this so you can print it off and you can get some notes and all that kind of stuff. And I'll put some other links that are kind of related to quadratics. It might be a little review you might need. And I'll put all that in the description below. Uh, please feel free to check out my website, thebeardedmathman.com. There's all kinds of great stuff on there. At least I think it's great. And um, let's see, today is March 30th, 2020. So Everybody's home on lockdown, trying to um, avoid spreading this horrible virus. Stay safe out there. Be nice to each other. 
If this is helpful, give it a thumbs up, share it on social media, and uh, I hope to see all of you guys and talk to you guys very soon. Be safe. Have a great day.